All right, welcome back to another video on Terraform. In the last video, we went through the steps of downloading Terraform and making sure it's in a place where we can use it and reference it on our machine. Now, what we want to do is begin to use this to build some resources on our Snowflake environment. So to start, I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code, which is what we've been using. Uh, let's open a folder. I'm going to create a new folder here and just call this Demo Terraform. Select this folder. Nice thing about Visual Studio Code is we can open up a terminal directly through here. So I'm going to open up a new terminal and we can see it's at this location. And now that we had now that we know that Terraform is on our machine, as we proved in the last video right here, the first step we want to do is initialize this folder to let our system know that this is going to be used for Terraform operations. So we're going to write Terraform and the command is init. All right, so if you see this error, that indicates that you actually need to restart your entire machine in order for Visual Studio to recognize this new command of Terraform and for it to work properly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll reload Visual Studio, and we'll hop back into this. Okay, so I've just restarted my computer. Let's go ahead and open up a new terminal. And now if I do Terraform init, it didn't give me the error. It says initialize in an empty directory, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so uh, from this folder here, this new folder, let's add a, a new file. So in this case, we'll just add the base file here, which is called main and then .tf, which is the extension for all Terraform files. There's some extensions that we can add through VS Code that makes this a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to look up Terraform and install the um, recommended one through HashiCorp. So installing that here, it'll just help with autocomplete and uh, a couple other things. Okay, so in our main.tf file, this is where we can start to write our Terraform code. So how do we even do that? The first thing we need to understand uh, is the concept of a provider. And a provider is essentially operates as an API to, to work with the different tools that you're, you're trying to develop. So in our case, we want a Snowflake provider that will interpret the code that we write in here and make the associated changes in our environment. So here we can see, I have this pulled up here, providers on the documentation, responsible for understanding API interactions and exposing resources. Um, Providers in the Terraform registry, and this is what we're actually going to use. There's a couple different ways you can add providers. You can hard code them, you can download them and include the files manually. But in our case, we're going to use the registry to do this. A lot of open source projects have begun to consolidate where they have their publicly available package tools. For example, dbt has a hub um, for different utility packages. You know, Docker has Docker hub. In this case, we'll go to Terraform registry. And as you can see here, there's providers for all sorts of things. There's you know, official ones from AWS, Azure, um, yeah, pretty much anything. And the great part is of an open source project is people can make their own and upload it here for others to use. In our case, we're going to look for Snowflake. And this one was built under the Chan Zuckerberg group, which yes, that is associated with Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook, which is pretty wild. And if we look here, if we want to use the provider, it gives you a little code snippet that you can use. In this case, you need to use Terraform 0.13 or later, which if you've uh, followed in the last video, we've done that. So that's fine. So let's copy this here and add it to our main.tf. And what this is saying is it's going to first look through the registry to see if it's there. And if it is, take this version and um, add it as part of um, the project here that we're working on. This is where we need to add the configuration options. So if we go back, go to documentation. Here's an example here of the provider configuration that we would want. So I'm going to copy this as well and replace it, replace this. Couple different things here. Again, this is going to be specific to Snowflake, but you would follow the same uh, basic setup for any other provider.
I'm going to change my password for the sake of this video. To make sure that the role has complete pri privileges for everything we want to do, I'm going to set this as account admin. And this is also assuming that your, your user has the ability to be an account admin. Okay, so now save this. Let's do uh, Terraform init. We can see it's initializing the back end. It's looking for the providers that we mentioned here, finding this Chan Zuckerberg Snowflake, and it's installing it. So instead of having to do that manually, all we had to do was put in this block of code. It goes to the registry and downloads it for us. And it says it's been successfully initialized and we're ready to roll. This is great. Okay. And the other two important commands that you'll want to understand are plan and apply in addition to init. So you have Terraform init, which is what we just did, which initializes your project and downloads all of the uh, necessary providers. Terraform plan will run through any of the resources that you've built, which we currently don't have any, uh, but it will let you know what it's planning to do. And then Terra Terraform apply will rerun the plan, but then also say, hey, are you ready to actually um, go ahead and implement these changes? The other one, I guess, to, to mention is Terraform destroy, which does the opposite of apply. It'll go through and remove the resources that are part of your code. So let's see what happens if we do Terraform, apply, Terraform plan. No changes, infrastructure is up to date. So let's go ahead and add a resource here and, and see how this works. So for example, let's say we want to add a new database. How would we do that? Normally in, in a, you know, a pre-Terraform world, we could go in here, we could write a create statement you know, through code and you know, say create database, create database, give it a name and whatever and, and, and build it and it would work. And then we'd have to go through and apply different permissions, give people access to it manually through code or through the user interface. And where Terraform comes in for this example is to help us put that all in one place to make it easy to understand who's got permissions to what. Like I said, let's start with creating uh, just another database. We'll go to the registry and look at the documentation. If we go to resources, let's do Snowflake database. So it has all the different properties. Some are uh, required, some aren't. In this case, the only required property is name. So let's add, let's say, I'm going to clean this up a bit. I'm just going to delete anything that's not, not needed yet. This actually brings up another thing that I'm getting a little off track, but if we see here where the formatting is off, Terraform comes built in with, with a way to format that for you. So if you run another command to format it. So if you do Terraform FMT, which is short for format, it should clean up the space for us. And there it does, which is kind of nice. It keeps everything, you know, well written. Main that TF did it for us. So that's done. So now let's let's create this resource. We're going to say, in this case, it's not a provider. This is a resource. So we'll say resource. The type is a Snowflake database. And then, and then you give it a name, my first DB. Wrap it around brackets, and you can see it recognize what's going on. And as it says here, the only requirement is name. So we'll write it similar to how this is done up here. So we'll say name equals, I'll just call it the name of this here and say my first db save let's do another terraform format cleans it up a bit for us now let's see what happens if we do terraform plan again this time we've added a, a resource now we can see it's created this execution plan it says we're doing all creates if we were modifying something this would be a squiggly line if we were deleting it'd be a negative sign and we can see here it's giving the name id will be after the after we apply it's going to add one change zero and destroy zero so now let's do terraform apply which again is going to rerun this plan and now it's going to say do you want us to actually perform these actions and just to show you what it looks like currently if i keep refreshing this we don't have this database if we say no, it's going to cancel it just to show you that. Now, if we apply again, it'll rerun that and say only yes will be accepted. 
click yes. And now it's going through creating a database. So after a lot of digging through here and troubleshooting, I realized that the error here was actually due to how I was identifying um, the region. And what I was missing is the dot Azure component. So if you ran into the same issue, hopefully that will save you a lot of time figuring out that one. Gotta love it. Okay, so now with this in place, we should be able to run this completely and see our first database be built in Snowflake through Terraform. So let's start this over. Let's make sure that everything is still initialized well. We'll do Terraform init. We'll just go through the whole process. Looks good. Correct Snowflake version. We'll do a Terraform plan. And we can see it's just the one resource that's going to create a database called my first db now let's run terraform apply yes we accept that these will be run and it completed the last time we saw this error this time we get the good uh, good looking green text one was added if we go into our snowflake uh, environment over here and refresh we see my first DB. There it is. So this was created through Terraform. Now, as another example, let's say um, we wanted to create uh, something else. Let's create a different resource. Let's let's say let's say we wanted to create a new role, for example. How would we do that? Let's go back to the documentation. Resources. Let's do uh, let's do a role. And this one's also very simple. The only required, um, the only required property is a name. So we can add a new one and say resource. This is auto completing for me here. You can do this with or without the quotations, but we'll this time we'll do it with with it. Why not? Snowflake underscore role, just like we see here. And the name we'll call this demo role. We'll give it a name equals we'll do demo role so just to clarify here this name here even though we're doing it as the same thing here this name is how it will be referenced throughout the rest of terraform so if you want to um, call this specific role and maybe assign certain permissions to this role you would refer to it by this name here just like you would refer to this database as my first db throughout the rest of uh, your Terraform code. So maybe just, just to make this clearer, let's say demo role. We'll, well, actually, let's call this analyst, just to, just to show how it's separate and where the name is coming from. So I'm going to save this. And down here, I'll do a Terraform FMT to, to format it, just to make sure everything is correct. And if we go to this environment again, and let's expand this so I can show you what exists currently. If I go to, to the roles here, there is no such thing as analyst currently. But let's now run another Terraform plan. And we can see that in this one, it's going to just add this new role, which is the, the only new thing that we've added here. So now let's do Terraform apply. We want this to go forward, say yes. And it created this resource. And if I go back over to the account, look at roles, I can see this analyst role is now here. There it is. There's no comment because I didn't add anything there. However, I'm not going to see it here just yet. And the reason it's not showing up here as an option is because my current user, MJ Khan, has not been given access to this role. Technically, nobody has. So this role was created as it exists, but there's no um, there's no users assigned to it, so it's not going to show up as an option. So how would we do that? How would we assign somebody to this role, and specifically myself, so that I can see it? If we go to role grants, we'll go resource, the name, 
of this resource is, a, is the role grant. So the Snowflake role grants name will say um, analyst role grant. Again, this is just how we'll refer to it as throughout the rest of um, Terraform. Understand that this actually has to be unique throughout. So that's the only stipulation here for the name. Role name. We could hard code the value and just say analyst. But another way you can do this is to actually say demo role dot name. So then it will go here here and give you this value. I think that's a more appropriate way to do that. And uh, honestly, as, you, as your Terraform code grows, this is how you'll likely have to do it. And then let's do users. This is going to give us an array of values. In our case, we're going to hard code my user here, which is, if we can get this, we'll do mjcon, that's the user I want to give it to. So mjcon. Save. Now let's do another Terraform plan. Oh, I need to declare the type of resource that it is in this case. So Snowflake role, the name of the role, which is this. And then in our case, we want the name property. So it's going one, two, three. And then and the reason this is important is in the case you had maybe five of these, this allows it to know which specific instance of the role you want, and then which property you want. So really, this is the equivalent of putting this there. But we're doing it a little bit more dynamically. So let's try again. Okay, so now this is saying it's going to give my this user, my user, this role. Okay, so now Terraform apply. You can see here that it's talking about states and refreshing states. That's a whole uh, other topic of discussion, but is a, obviously a very critical part of how uh, Terraform works behind the scenes. And we'll get into that later. In this case, for now, just to get going, we'll say yes. This worked. Let's go back. Refresh. And we should expect to see that new role as an option now because it's been assigned to my user. And there it is. We can be an analyst. But now, if we s select analyst, what I would actually expect to happen is just to lose sight of this my first DB. Let's see if that's the case. And that's true. We lose everything. We lose uh, the warehouses because this is a brand new role. There's nothing else assigned to it other than me as a user, but there's no other permissions. So it just has the defaults. So as you can see here, as you grow out the environment and start to add roles and other resources, you have to make sure these things are all aligned and that the permissions are granted accordingly. And that's why having something like Terraform to manage this as a code allows you to keep track of it, allows you to dynamically set things together. And as it grows, you can pass it on to other people and everyone can easily understand exactly what's going on. Uh, as well as if you ever wanted to just spin up the exact same version of your environment somewhere else, you could do it again by just changing where you're pointing your uh, you know your your credentials to and rerunning everything and it would just spin it up again exactly as you had it so i think we'll stop here for this video thanks for watching if you found this helpful please leave a comment or feel free to subscribe thank you